life's building blocks are carbon, of course, you know, hydrogen, nitrogen, uh, oxygen, uh, primarily. And you could really say that life is um, uh, a confluence of multiple vibrations. And uh, it's how life's electromagnetic forces uh, influences um, you know, life as an organism. But humans um, can ingest, for instance, the radiation uh, that comes from minerals that have been naturally complexed by life colloid as bacteria. Um, these uh, life colloid are uh, lithophilic, meaning rock-loving, and they eat rocks, and they produce uh, humix and forvix and things which complex smaller um, atom clusters of rocks, of mineral, um, which then the, those minerals all are minerals which can be applied in the machinery of life, just like the wind can fall over a, a windmill or water can fall over a water wheel. Uh, it doesn't incorporate itself into the wheel at all, but it assists to help to create the machinery to run. And so minerals, that's what minerals do. But we're closest to minerals more through uh, life colloid, which is uh, life very deep all the way into the earth. Um, but how does the body rid itself of a wart? And what's the difference between a wart as tissue and uh, regular tissue? Uh, primarily, you could say that you've got tiny little spores in that tissue as well as cells, that's all. Um, and um, all spores like that can be evicted from the body um, as a result of life food, nutritional fasting and doing job cell rejuvenation and flushing away bile stones and reducing the inflammation in here reducing uh, all the strange undigestible protein that people could be consuming and all of the uh, foodstuffs which have runaway sugar like element in it and things. Um, but a colloid of life is composed of hydrogen, you know, and um, when you eat uh, life food you're sort of really bringing in more normalising energy. Otherwise uh, you're bringing in things which are radiating an energy which is not compatible really to life. The call of life is composed of hydrogen, that's ex uh, a hydrogen excited electron. Um, it's shifting between harmonics um, and uh, as it shifts between harmonics a photon is given off and um, this is perceived as light by us and it's sort of to emanate more from the hydrogen um, atom, which happens to be the smallest atom in the universe. Um, uh, it's, a, it's really a small pinprick portal, you know, as a proton where energy is bursting forward through that pinprick portal uh, into this third dimension. It's energy having slowed down enough um, and gone past through a friction grid to to actually be condensed uh, into uh, matter. Um, but so, you know, a proton really is like a pinprick portal where energy is bursting forward, just like a stone actually just uh, being dropped into a pond. And around that stone you can see tiny little bubbles, which are little whirlpools also, which are electrons. And you could have uh, one... Uh, an electron in its little whirlpool size can be about 1,500 times smaller than a proton. And that's an energy is uh, blipping in and slightly out um, on this dimension. Um, and uh, so energy is bursting forward from a proton and sort of slowly being sucked back into the fourth dimension. Um, uh, and uh, However, you know, wherever there is a crest and a trough where they unite, um, no light is perceived by us. So we have a lot of uh, matter such as this, which is more dark matter and, and uh, 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 black energy, 
which is makes up most of the universe and also makes up our all of life as we know it. Uh, a body has its own um, instructive sort of radiative force, um, which harnesses a mutual lived existence, and this mutual lived existence is these life colloid all living in a union in uh, mutual lived assistance with us, which explains how all the species that we can see around us has come to be, not through mitotic cell division, uh, which is an error at the moment in uh, the modern world. Um, but that uh, colloids of life uh, aggregate into spores, and then those spores fuse with other spores and become double spores, and those double spores fuse with other double spores and become a bacteria. Um, it could have, be minus its cell wall, like as an acid fast cell wall deficient bacteria, which is like what mycoplasma is, and it can find itself in an environment where there's a morph morphogenic field, and it can differentiate itself into a bacteria which could wriggle and crawl right through your brain or anywhere, basically, you know, like as a Bogotaforia borelli. Um, but the um, body can, other than have kept its oxidative metabolic uh, process, and it can become hypoxic and acidic, the tissue could be composed of second-hand material like trans fatty acids. So in that, in this situation, myelin sheathing, if it doesn't have its proper uh, oxidative metabolism, it the colloids of life, which make up as building blocks the myelin sheathing, they are uh, aggregated and fused into spores, double spores, which is the building block of myelin sheathing. Those double spores can uh, disassemble from their building blocks as myelin sheathing, and they can extrude and eventually assemble themselves into an acid-fast cell wall deficient bacteria. So, you know, the body can break down into mold, fungus and yeast and bacteria just the same as uh, a log of wood in the ground rotted right at the surface where electrolysis, where two dissimilar elements were present so radically that those materials created an electrolysis sort of thing, you know. But, um, so we live in a sea of um, antioxidants and oxidants and every little bit of DNA every day um, is getting about 10,000 hits on its DNA and it's formidable and we live in a sea of antioxidants to assist to help to create a um, life and to manage the structure that we have but life could we say similar to a whirlpool um, just like a tornado it searches to find areas where it can sustain itself um, and whilst it has its energy to hold its composition of itself together you can see it has a structure at the moment it's energy doesn't hold itself together quite anymore, it can be dissipated into something else sort of thing and so um, from dust we come and dust we return in a way and that this dust is colored of life which really are the dust is actually made up, the dinosaurs that making up you and I and that um, these uh, spores can be found in outer space um, absolutely for us to know that we definitely have life in outer space um, but could we see just like uh, a champion rejuvenator of colloid of life, a life colloid, as spores would be like a sponge, which if it was sift through a strainer, uh, it can assemble itself back into its sponge-like state body. Um, once it's gone through that, um, it's a champion rejuvenator in the way that if you could imagine how things occur... Uh, on this level, it's not through mitotic cell division at all that things grow. It actually is through a process of aggregating, fusing, and differentiating. Um, but the red blood corpuscle, you know, uh, uh, carries a super fluidity and super conductiveness. And as it's percussed in the heart, uh, vortexes are formed there, 
and right at the apex of these vortexes you've got tens of thousands of volts of electricity so things become very energized as a result of the percussion of the heart and the red blood corpuscle is more than just a transporter of oxygen it transports uh, all of the double spore which end up being the building blocks of uh, life and the cells and the organelles as we know it so anyway, I uh, hope you're having a wonderful day as you've been listening to this and look forward for us to catch up with each other.